Hello and welcome back to Riot Report. I am so glad you're here. It's like you never even left. That's the feeling we want. It feels good. I'm really glad to see all of you here checking out the stream. Riot Report is the second episode, or this is the second edition now, and we are going to bring you everything we can from the community, from Riot. This is a show for you, by us, but also by you, by the community. Everything you make, you say, you do, along with what Riot's doing here across the board. We're gonna take that and beam it to your brain to make sure you know what is going on and how we are working on things and how your suggestions are helping us to work on things. Now, this show is on a every other week cadence, so we will be back on November 6th, and we have a lot to cover today before we get to that point. Now, this show today will go over a lot of things. We're gonna go over some PBE changes, patch updates, the 10 days of gifting. We have a really cool interview along with Riot Whitrock. He is a game designer here at Riot Games and more specifically a lead set designer on the TFT set two. So we'll be able to talk to him about what went into set two and how he was able to make everything work with that team and how much work they put into it. And I am very happy to announce that before today is over, we are bringing back Summoner Showcase again. Let's go. Summoner Showcase is back with Swim Bananas. And we're gonna have a lot of the awesome content that the community has been providing over the last 10 days and over the last 10 years to celebrate League 10 with us. It's gonna be amazing. I cannot wait. So let us start with the Riot Roundup. The Riot Roundup is going to take us through a lot of the things throughout the day, and then we'll get onto a little bit more of some of the showcase and the interview and kind of the bulk of the day. But Riot Roundup will let you know everything that's happening now, and we are going to start with the 10 days of gifting. I hope you have been participating in 10 days of gifting, everybody, because this is something that you really need to get yourself in for. It is day six right now. There'll be the prestige points later today as they are released, but get those orbs, get those chocolate cake balls and whatnot, everything gobbled up, and we're gonna get you, you're gonna get you some awesome stuff. I really wanted to let you know what I kind of had in my orbs, but I opened them all at the same time. I realized I had done so many quests uh, and played so many games and then went into my loot box and I was like, I'm gonna let everybody know what I have. And then I just started opening the masterwork chest, the champion capsule from leveling up my chocolate orb, my vanilla cake orb, and I have no idea what I got. It was a lot of cool crap, but <laughs> let me know what you got. Hashtag Rito Report on Twitter. Let me know what you were getting. Also be sure to check out your shop because that is open now for the 10 days and you could have some legendary skins in your shop, which is actually pretty sweet. I had Zombie Brand coming up. Brand is one of my favorite supports to play. Let's see what everybody's chatting about. Prestige points, yes, I know you want them. They're gonna be fantastic. A lot of people said like, I played too many of the same thing before the store opened up. So they're like, I have all these but then there was a pretty cool prestige ones. I saw a lot of winter skins as well, which is awesome. I always think those ones that you just cannot get any other time are really ones to pick up because they, they're really awesome in game. They usually have some pretty cool effects for winter. So check out your shop. Make sure you do get into that. Uh, moving on a little bit here, we have to talk about patch 9.21. It is out and Halloween is coming up. So we will have to check out those skins, but do not forget to log in on October 27th as we are speaking about skins right now. The anniversary skin will be coming out for the 10 days of gifting. Now this is October 27th, so it's bumping it up one day. It is that 11th day, we're turning it up a notch, but if you don't log in on the 27th, you won't be able to get anniversary. It doesn't work like the other quests. You're not gonna be able to just kind of go back and retro it and do the, do the games with your friends after the fact. You're gonna have to play it on that day. Get yourself anniversary. It's an amazing skin, looks great. Get your party on with Annie. I love it. She's even in TFT now, so tons of Annie coming out everywhere. Really, really awesome stuff. So don't forget to log in. The day after that, the 28th, is a pretty big day. Remember that day, the 28th. Earth is back. Earth is back until November 8th. It is the all select Earth. Let me know what you think you're going to be seeing. I'm really, really excited about this. I heard a lot of people on Twitter talking about Vlad standing in front of the Nexus, or I should say one person messaged me that he was excited to stand in front of people's fountain in Nexus as Vlad, and after six, they just basically can't leave. You're toxic, but I wanna shake your hand if that actually works. I'm excited for Kiana. I think she's going to be absolutely bonkers, if not banned all the time, uh, but it'd be pretty sweet if you could see her get through. And then everybody was saying, Garen, Yumi. I mean, come on. You're really gonna spend your time flying around on Yumi. You already can cast everything absolutely on every second. So what's the difference? Don't do that. You'll feel better at the end of the day, I promise. Uh, looking at the 28th as well, we did talk about Earth, but we also have to talk about Senna dropping on PBE. You will be able to check out Senna, the first 
Mark's woman support getting into that bot lane, and we're gonna have to see what she can do. I'm a Thresh main, like I said last week, so it's gonna be a little difficult to see that kind of lore broken apart. I'm gonna have to hook Senna as much as possible and kind of make sure that I am the one able to own that lane still. Senna, no, back into the lantern. That's how it's going. Lucian's going in there too. Nobody's safe at all. Let's look at some of the preseason changes here as we move forward. I'm really excited. Drakes are surrounding us and Drakes are surrounding you. So many changes coming in from these right here and I am excited. A lot of people are saying, what are these? It's too crazy, too much is gonna happen. I think it's awesome and I wanna explain why. It's not up until the third Drake that the game is affected. Before that third Drake spawns, that's when you get the idea of what's going to happen. And it doesn't always happen super randomly. The, the changes are going to happen and occur around the buff camps, around the dragon pit. These are all layouts that are going to consistently be the same thing for that entity. And you're going to be able to play around those, really start to understand what advantages you can use against your opponent if you're down or even if you are ahead. I really think it's gonna be exciting. And after that third Drake spawns, that's the element you're gonna get for the rest of the game. So everybody can continue to kind of figure out how to play around that Drake, how to make themselves a champion. And then get to the Elder, so you can get Emulation and just take people out, which you can still dodge. You can dodge it, you can Zanyas, you can get a Kindred's Lamb's Respite, but if you're still burning by the time that hits you, you just, you're gonna pop, it's gonna be fun. So I cannot wait to see what those changes are. Continuing with the roundup, let's move on a little bit here. Uh, Team Fight Tactics set two is live on PBE. I saw a few streamers playing it last night. It looks absolutely awesome. And I think one of the kind of main things is, is there is so much to unpack. So I can't wait to talk to Riot Whitrock today, see what he has to say about it, what's a great approach to set to, because there is so much to unpack. You have so many more classes, abilities, champions, origins to go through, and it's gonna be really awesome to see how all that plays out. Now, if you are grinding, 9.2 ends when 9.22 starts, November 26th, or, or November 6th, sorry, I'm just adding too many twos, November 6th. So when 9.21 ends, that's the end of the beta rank season. Grind your LP now, put your little legends to work, and make sure you get yourself into TFT to get that, or get that before it resets for set two. Like I said, I've seen a lot of streamers on uh, Twitch getting on that PBE, streaming a bit of, you know, Steel Assassins, or kind of trying to hit electricity with Lux, and I can't wait to talk about all that later. Teamfight Tactics Mobile will be crossplay as we see it coming up in 2020, so be sure to check that out. That'll be really, really awesome to be able to just kind of hang out. You're traveling somewhere, you're able to play some Teamfight Tactics with your friends who are at home, and that will be amazing. Now. A little recap of Legends of Rune Terra. The patch preview was awesome. Thank you so much for participating. The entire Legends of Rune Terra team wants to say thank you for watching, for creating content, participating, and just giving them your suggestions as you moved throughout the patch preview. Now, next patch preview is November 14th. You can still get on and get yourself an account for that. Go to playruneterra.com and the drops will still be available when that goes live again if you're watching your favorite streamers. Now a little bit of extra things that they're allowing us to say as we come out and uh, November 14th for the new patch preview is the Expeditions, which is a draft mode that you'll be able to go into. So a little bit different gameplay. It's not kind of just go in, normal play against somebody. Expeditions will be a draft mode that you can get your hands on. And like I said before, drops will also be something that you can get your hands on. Now, we will do a quick lane swap. I'm gonna be back in just a few minutes with Mel Swim Bananas here from Riot to go over Summoner Showcase! We'll be right back.
right, we back. It's Riv, it's Mel. Hello. Mel, thank you so much for joining me. Riot Swim Bananas, as many of you may know, Mel, Summoner Showcase has been around so many times. Oh, it's yes. been back. It's always been showing the most awesome content that our community has provided. I know, this is what, version number four that Riot Games has produced. <laughs> there was the Nikasaur, uh, then there was All Chat, then yep. there was me on Facebook, and now we here live. Because, you know, Riot Games likes community stuff. And there's always room for community stuff because there is so much always coming through the door. We had the 10 days of gifting going on already, but throughout that 10 days of gifting, people may have seen a playing or watching streamers that things are changing within the game. Last year, yesterday, we had the first 40 champions replaced with art that was made from our community, which yeah. is actually pretty awesome. It's super cool. So we hired a bunch of community artists that have been with League for the past 10 years, and we had them picked one of the first 40 champions that resonated the most with them <laughs> and make their own beautiful additions I love that this went Ramis. into client. Um, so you can see it on the screen right now. We have a couple, obviously the 40 champions, when you pick one of them, it gets replaced during the loading screen. So you're not gonna see the normal version or the fan art version when you're picking the champion. But when you load into the game with like Ash or Heimerdinger, for example, you're gonna see this beautiful version here. Um, fun fact, each day of the 10 days of gifting, in a <laughs> In addition to being giving you guys cool things in the game, it's focused on a different creator community. So the first day was focused mostly on streamers. Uh, then we had our YouTube days and mm -hmm. fan artists. And then today we're transitioning over to cosplay. Later on this week, we're going to have musicians and esports and kind of all of the different communities that we have. Uh, so if you guys pay attention, you might be able to pick up the through line in the client of what you see in your particular region. That's absolutely amazing. I love this because here at Riot, like. We'll see the splash art that goes out, and it's always glittery and it's always crisp. But then you, you, you just you're flooded with all this art, and you realize that everybody is so good in their own style. Like somebody can make a stick line figure look absolutely amazing. Like I couldn't even do that. It looks like something on the top right that Riot Moose would draw. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, I think that's the Sung One Kale, um, which he is a fantastic artist who does. It's so like, good. The little chibi version. I love it. Of the like characters. the line work on that is so clean, and the little things that you can actually look at in these are amazing and then you have some that people put all these kind of ability or artifacts into and effects and whatnot They're, they all are amazing in their own right and I absolutely love that people kind of say hey I resonate with this champion that much mm -hmm. that I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make it a few years ago for Halloween I actually carved a Kenan pumpkin because Ooh. Kenan was just my man I had to <laughs> he, that's I, I, I can definitely relate to where these artists are coming from I know Riot at one point had a, a pumpkin carving contest I remember that yeah did you should have entered your Kenan that would have been a best it was decent. Show, I'm right? a tracer, though. You know, oh, pumpkin tra so you it, it is what it is. It looks good, though. It looks good because you're still putting a lot of work into it. Just like that Tarek. He was putting a lot of work into that picture. I I love all of these. The Zillion, super cool. We do. We might need a new Groovy. We might need a new Groovy. It's been a long time. I like it. I like it a lot. There's new new splashing out on the side. This is super, super cool. So what do we have to look at today? You said cosplay mm -hmm. tutorials. Let's dig in. Yeah, so today uh, is cosplay day. So in all of the regions, every single group is celebrating cosplayers in a different and unique way. Cool. However, globally, we commissioned five different cosplayers to make co cosplay tutorials of champions that they cared about, that they were passionate about, but also build a skill level or build a video based on the particular level of ability. So for example, Kimpatsu was our beginner friendly cosplay. Um, she made an arcade Riven tutorial, uh, which is everything that is in goes into the cosplay, you can find at a local fabric shop. So if you're here in the US, like a Joann's, if you have access to Amazon, oh, you can find good. everything on Amazon. So the idea is that this is my first cosplay. Right. I don't know how to do anything. I have a sewing machine and a prayer. How do I make a thing? It's not like a cooking show where you're just like, nope, I'm done. That's three <laughs> ingredients in. I don't have that. Exactly. So this is Kimpatsu's edition. Uh, she made the beginner friendly one. And then t taking the next step up, we had the Spiral Cats from Korea. Uh, Tasha had an iconic Nidalee back in 2014, and she redid it and remade it and showed how to make her like OG League of Legends cosplay. So this Nidalee cosplay was the first cosplay she ever did for League back in 2014. Mm -hmm. And she's like, let's do it again and let's show the community how to make it. So and there, it doesn't look like there's too much to that, save no. for the work put into it, right? But uh, in materials wise, yeah, looks it's like the next level anyway. up. So like right. the, they use an airbrush, they use a, mm -hmm. a little bit more complicated equipment, but nothing dramatic that you can't be able to make it. That's absolutely amazing. Going one step even farther more complicated is our gentleman, twin cosplay from Let Am, He's representing Yasuo, representing all of the men. I know this looks oh very complicated. Oh my word. <laughs> 
but it's actually uh, what I would qualify it as a more an intermediate cosplay. Things that are complicated in cosplay can be armor and weathering, which you can tell he's a master of. Yes. And he teaches you how to do it in his style. His hair obviously is also going to be complicated whenever you're dealing with a Yasuo, getting that thing to stand up <laughs> on your head. Can be over Probably has a paper towel tube going through there, maybe? Um, he no. basically has like a metal <laughs> rod that oh. he's like glued the, the hair onto and then has Warblow, which is a heated thermoplastic right. that goes underneath the base of his wig. So then that way it can stand up right. Uh, but he did one as well. That's amazing. It looks almost animated in itself. Yeah. Like if you watch a cartoon as your kid, you're like, oh, that's more animated. That's something that's going to move. That's, that's kind of like <laughs> that idea you get from him. Awesome. So a whole different subset of cosplay is prop building. Mm -hmm. um, so going up to the advanced level, we have Taizy Zhang from China showing us an advanced prop build of how to build oh. the uh, Pulse Fire Caitlin gun. That's what it's called. I almost said God Goddess. That's not bad. <laughs> almost though. <laughs> so kind of the same feeling. So she showed how to build the gun piece by piece, um, just the prop. She didn't talk about the rest of the costume because mm -hmm. prop building is a whole other subset of cosplay. So she was going in extreme detail of how to add the lights, how to add all of the uh, colored effects and things like that. So you can make it for yourself. Um, and then this one's actually going live tomorrow. So a tiny bit of a spoiler alert <gasps> on the Riot Report. Oh my God. The advanced level cosplay is Senna. Oh my word. So Cutie Pie Sensei here in North America made Senna. We gave her all the bells and whistles. Sky's that the limit. Immaculate. Do what you need to do. Um, so her gun is actually 3D printed. When it's standing up next to her, it is true to scale in the game. It goes all the way up to her shoulder. Uh, it is a big, hefty piece of a material. So that's why it's our master level one. You're going to need a 3D printer. You're going to need some of those advanced level skills to do this one. That's absolutely amazing. I mean, you've done cosplay yourself. Yeah. What? So for the, this advanced to be done in this amount of time, how how crazy is that? I mean, she did it in a month. So. Spoiler alert, we, she, we let her cheat a little bit. We oh, gave okay, her a little okay. bit of a heads up. Okay. We said, hey, yo, this thing's coming. Uh, it'd be Still cool. Still amazing. <laughs> uh, but she spent a lot of time. The thing I love about her work in particular is she takes a lot of time to pick out fabrics. She doesn't just like say, oh, this is white. That works well enough. She was like, this looks like a leather material, but it won't lay correctly in real life with this. So let's use this specific leather. Let's find this specific type of fabric. So that's what really elevates, in my opinion, this cosplay from some of the others that you might see because she takes that extra step to know the materials. That's absolutely incredible. I can't really kind of wrap my head around how to do that. You see something and you're like, oh, it's in my brain. I can mold and craft this. Then you go to kind of put it to form and everything mm -hmm. comes out different, right? Yeah. And I love the fact that we did see that a lot of these were made from a uh, little to not little uh, next to nothing to pretty much everything. Yeah. But once you have kind of the perfection of your craft, the craft like we saw the weathering work and the armor yeah. and whatnot, you can make that trip to Joanne's make yes. look like a band, <laughs> yeah, yeah, which yeah. is absolutely amazing. So really what it takes is not going out and buying the $400 materials all no. the time, but knowing how to use all the $5 ones first and then you can make them look for them. Cosplay budgeting is a thing. It's the thing we <laughs> always talk about in cosplay land. You always are like, I'm gonna do everything. And then you you realize you have a paycheck and you have to you know, yep. live within your means. So figuring out how to do something from a Joanne's run is always a good thing. My, my SO, Anaya does cosplay art and, it, mm -hmm. and it's kind of related to uh, my motorcycle stuff is where it's never going to cost what you're expected to cost no, no, at no. first. <laughs> Budget it, make sure you can do it so you're not kind of hitting a wall and like, I don't want to finish this anymore. Because I'm sure that can be a thing too. <laughs> oh, where, it you, where it's like, oh, there's only a week left before PAX or before Worlds. How do I get it done? Con Crunch, man. It's terrifying. I think I've been up to like five in the morning the day before Con trying I, to get yeah. something done. Uh, and then it doesn't work. And then you're just crying. And then you go to sleep and you have fun anyways. Video games. All right, so what <laughs> else do we have on the yeah. docket? Um, so obviously when you're celebrating 10 years of League of Legends on the internet, the internet decides to celebrate along with you. Uh, we had a lot of fan artists showing off their cool things out in the world. So I've collected some of my favorites and shown off some of the ones that I think are particularly cool. Like this first one from Issa Mitsu. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. She made this adorable chibi art of their favorite champions. So obviously you have Lulu, Morgana, Ezreal, etc. But the idea was just their favorite champions over the last 10 years, people that they think are super awesome and super who's, cool. who, who's in there for you? I mean, Lulu's one of my favorites, just in because there? she's adorable and she's cute. Yep. If I had to put my own champions in there, they'd all be 80 carries, because <laughs> I, I have one, I'm a one trick, and that is being an 80 carry, I guess. Heck yeah, <laughs> heck yeah. It'd be Thresh, Kennen, and, and maybe Morgana or Lulu on there. Chat, who would be in your art? Yeah, who's tell, in your art? Who is, tell us who's in your art, chat. 
Uh, similarly, Super Riso also made a 10-year art. Um, this is what they put together and collaborated with. Um, you'll notice that this style is similar to the, the comic that Super Riso did with us. They did a Zyra comic a while ago collaboration, so they used the same style and some of the same characters. Uh, fun fact, Super Riso said that they've been playing since Vayne came out. Vayne was the first champion that was released when they Perfect. started playing. I like that. What was yours? Uh, what, what are your, what's your class of? Uh, well, when I started at Riot, I was Project Yi. Okay, but I cool. started playing League of Legends when Ari was released. So awesome. Ari was on Free Week when I started playing. Yeah. And that's how I played Sivir. Because I liked Ari's Q that went out and came back. And level five Mel was like, well, I like that it goes out and comes back. <laughs> Let's find somebody else who has a Q that goes out and come back. Wow, Sivir, done. Sweet. That's, that's who I'm going to main forever. Done. Perfect. Easy yeah, peasy. I don't remember who was out the week I was, but it was Class of Karma when I started. Mm. So. Still back there, still back there. You got there. a champion. You're lucky. I got a champion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Going on with more of the League 10 year stuff, we have Mia Cat. Um, she actually made this for the event for League Tenure in, over in Korea. So all of the offices across the globe had various different live events, and they made this particular piece for the Korean office. Uh, so this was not just featured on the internet, but also featured live at the event. So in the program, when you arrived, you saw mm -hmm. some of these beautiful drawings. You saw it like up on the wall as you came in. It was a, I saw a picture where it was up the escalator as you came into the stage up in Korea, so it was yep. fantastic. Heck yeah. I think it's really cute because it's like cartoonish and almost like that Disney Pixar style yeah I love it it's like it's like they're happily off to fight with the war band mm -hmm. but but nobody's gonna get hurt they're coming <laughs> back home we also had a few answers from the, the 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 triple what would you put in your your champions and they're like Jin Ezreal uh, a lot of ash 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 <laughs> for some people uh, Morgana was still in there so it's cool thanks for just participating from the chat we are checking it out as it's moving quick and uh, we'll keep getting that update in there on to next art. We have Rainy Gaze from Chile made this super cute comic. Uh, so Yumi, Yumi Garen is the thing. <laughs> I saw this. <laughs> so this is what the expectations is versus awesome. reality. Uh, the idea is that, hey, you know, Yumi's just going to heal this tank. It's going to be great. But the reality <laughs> is she's just like an automatic assault rifle just sitting on this giant tank that's running around. Put the book down. <laughs> Put the book down. So I thought Brainy Gaze is an artist who particularly likes memes, especially from esports. This is great. Hence why their celebrating of tenure is with a meme from the esports community. Um, but I also like that they took that and added in their own kind of fun spin with the with the gun, I guess, popping out of the books. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you me, you me is the one you have to be worried about. Say <laughs> hello to my little friend. Yep. So Ross Draws is an artist that's been around the league community for a long time, and he, instead of making new art, kind of rebumped some of his old stuff. And I don't know if you've ever actually seen Ross's draws, but his YouTube videos are what's really cool. He takes a photo of say his mom eating an apple or something and then he will <laughs> literally random things and then he will take the colors that appear in that and play with them and move them around live to video and create art like this misfortune he's done a misfortune that's his mom eating an apple i'm just kidding i don't know if that's what it is but it was something <laughs> originally uh, so there's a misfortune there's a jinx and i believe he did one other one that he shared up uh, but these are all pieces that he's done in the past. So oh, people are asking, what is that stream, if you know it? Oh, uh, I, it's, he does it on YouTube. So just look up Ross Draws on YouTube. Okay, on uh, YouTube. It's YouTube video. He, he does a YouTube compilation of all of these things. So very cool. Super Thank cool. you for that. Yeah, and he does it in very dramatic and unique styles. Oh. Uh, so this is that kind of whimsical thing I was talking about earlier where you can, you can have no background to your art and it still looks glorious. And you yep. can do this and put uh, and that effort into it and... It still looks beautiful. Like I love that juxtaposition, but also being on the same. Level. Yeah, and I think the thing that he really adds is the joy of like seeing the process again. Oh, they are completely random so cool. photos. He'll take a picture of ramen, and it'll become something. <laughs> and it's I, I don't understand how it works. My brain doesn't function. Like Zach that. monster. I can see it <laughs> happening. Uh, obviously, since League Ten Year announcement, we've announced, we announced a couple things. Riot Games maybe maybe did some stuff on the internet. An S. Well, I, 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 maybe you know, and one of which is Senna. So we had a couple of Senna art Ugh. that's popped up into the world, uh, like this one from Ju Jewel She. I think I'm saying this correctly. Uh, fun fact: they were an intern this past summer here at Riot. Really? So they they, Very cool. they had a little bit of insider help with art style, not necessarily knowledge. They I can see why they were an intern. <laughs> you can see why they were an intern. <laughs> um, so there was a lot of Senna art. This one Very I good. particularly like because you had the effect of the smoke coming off of the cape itself, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's almost like she's coming yeah. right out of the lantern in she's front of you. She's still materializing. Correct. Yeah. Uh, next one for Senna that I pulled out was Lunz Lunzunday. They made this as a warm up. 
before they started doing real art, quote, quote, on the internet. I'm and that's when I don't like you anymore. <laughs> You're like, my hand fell on the page, and this is what happened. No, that's absolutely amazing. I, what an awesome piece This of looks art. like one of those emotes that are like up on Facebook or something where you can react. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Absolutely, we have those yeah, absolutely, This looks like one of those, like, I'm throwing shade emotes. I, actually, I feel like that could be uh, Legends of Rune Terror sticker. Oh, yeah. As it comes out, you like, you like somebody plays like a block to your card, and you're like, you give them the side eye. You're, you're like, just like, really no. jerk? No, not okay. allowed. Okay. Get out of here. Uh, something you talked about Riot Report last week, mm -hmm. KDA Gragas. Oh, baby. Somebody put him into the game. He's a thing. He's a thing. So Riot Chan was the Riot artist who obviously made the piece on the side, and then Noah Warner is the community member who is like, I love this idea. What would it look like inside of Summoner's Rift? And now Noah has a job, apparently. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think Noah has that, a job. That's amazing to iterate that on just a night. I, I love it. I, so like I said before, it kind of brings back the uh, the Shushe dance from yes. Season 1 Worlds when he grabbed the water jug and opened up his Fanatic shirt. Yeah. But also, uh, it, it needs the prestige black light skin. You need, to oh, you need to cover them in spray yeah, paint. Yeah, yeah. Give them, a, yeah, black, black light. Noah, if you're watching, we need the black light <laughs> version. Or Jason, give us the black light version. One of you, we'll somebody. We'll call it Super Sexy Gragas. Yep, that's Riv's named it. Congratulations, our uh, skins team. <laughs> you don't need pass. to do any work. <laughs> All right. Obviously, we had Senna, and then we had some fun stuff coming out of the on site activations. You talked about it earlier the anniversary skin. She's getting some love, of course, on the internet. So cool. We have a, two that I've pulled out. So, this one first is from Crystal Mew. It's much more like chibi and adorable. I feel like it really evokes the Annie, like, cutesiness, if you will. Yeah. Um, much more of the, like, hey, I'm a little little girl running around. I feel like Disneyland, but not really Disneyland. I don't know what the path if is. If you were to just <laughs> see it, you would be really cool with walking up and saying hi. If if you're in the know, you'd, stay, you'd still stay far away. I like, I like it. <laughs> and then the next one that we found was from Cicero. This one's a little bit more of the, like, Full cartoon, full anime version rather That's than a quick cool. sketch. Uh, again, I love in particular how people have taken like the cutesiness of Annie and then was like, okay, where would Annie go? This looks like Annie's at Worlds, right? This looks like Heck Annie yeah. is celebrating the Legends. World. I get like a World Stadium vibe, like yeah. she's also in like a tournament. Yeah. She's using Timo and Aporo. <laughs> Gotta catch them all. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, obviously, something else we announced. The internet keeps asking about it. Chat keeps being like, where's my drops? Uh, Legends of Runeterra. Legends of Runeterra already has art up on the internet. Did you know that? No, I did not. <laughs> I mean, I know we put art up on the internet, yes. but if you that quick... <laughs> yes, the community uh, fell in love with a couple of different cards, particularly the Crimson Aristocat card. Um, I don't know if you've actually seen this card out on the internet yet. Uh, this particular Noxian woman, I do not know what her name is, appears in a couple of different pieces of art. Um, the one that people tend to enjoy a lot is Crimson Aristocat, which is the name of the card. So go look that up. Um, so this one by Mercury JC is just her like out in the world, being a human, being a thing. Um, and then the internet does what the internet does best with Girl X Pirate and started shipping cards. So cards have already been shipped. Of course. Uh, so here you go. This is Crimson Aristocat card being shipped with somebody else. Uh, I think it's also the other person shown off in the card, but. Is this a kill one to draw one? Uh, I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. All I know is the internet it was like, tell me this woman's story, and then they drew pictures of her. So. There you go. There I you mean, go. the lore comes out from, from every which angle, right? <laughs> and, and if the community has a chance to have a say in it, yeah. we will. Exactly. Um, so. Last thing in this month is Inktober. So the month of October, for those of you who are not fan artists, is Inktober, where every single day artists will challenge themselves to create a new piece of art, to draw something new, to have a prompt, and then make a thing related to it. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple Riot artists put out some prompts called Skintober, where they uh, say, hey, make a, on day one, make a Star Guardian art, and then on day two, make a project art, and on day three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what I've done is I've collected a couple of the Inktober arts, because. It's October, so you gotta celebrate Inktober. Absolutely. So first we have Yonari Art, who was the Tarek from earlier. Uh, fun fact, they love Tarek. They draw mostly Tarek. This is the Splash Tarek. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I was gonna say, uh, this yeah. Is the same artist. Same line work, Tarek. very nice. Um, this is their Immortal Journey Tarek. So taking the new skin line that was with Nami and that whole crew and making a Tarek edition. That is so good. I feel like that needs to come out with Dawnbringer Karma. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be super cool together. Um, and then to go with the theme of treasure, Tumaruski made this pike, 
which I thought is particularly awesome because we can't oh. quite see it from here, but there's like cell graphics details, almost like in a comic where there's like dot lines and work uh, that shows it off a lot more like a comic style. That's cool. He's like a big kaiju, <laughs> a giant ocean monster. He's going to come into town and just start alting people for every 25 seconds. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> it's broken. Um, coming in with the true spice, the real spice, the good internet spice is one animator. Hit it. Uh, this Ooh. is George, Star Guardian Nico's familiar. Uh, I'm sure you know the story of George, the OG story of George. I, I do. Uh, I'm surprised he's still with us after all the trials and tribulations he's yes. gone through, <laughs> jumping off of Summoner's Rift. Yes. So George not only has survived Summoner's Rift, but he's become a Star Guardian, mm -hmm. um, and now he is, I guess, spicy Star Guardian frog. I feel like jumping off a of Summoner's Rift is something similar to like what you'd see in Thor when they jump off Asgard. <laughs> they're just like falling forever until yeah. they're not, and you're like, hey, by the way, I'm back. I'm Hello. Back. And no, then I'm it's George. And then he's like, by the way, let me do a sexy, sexy hip pose. Here you go. What's up? <laughs> Draw me like one of your French girls. All right. And then, last but not least, the, my favorite piece that I found this couple weeks on the internet is L I S K V R B A. I do not know how to say that as one word. Uh, KDA Goosey Because why not? It is so good. <laughs> Causing trouble, being a nuisance, rebel without a cause. KDA Goosey You know, sometimes you just got to be a goddess with a blade. Got, do it to him. Got, got us with a beak. <laughs> nice. And floppy feet. Well, that's all I had for Summoner Showcase this two weeks. That's absolutely amazing. Did you amazing. have fun? I, I had a lot of fun. Did you have fun? Yee. I'm going to wait and chat now. Chat, that. tell us if you had fun. <laughs> we will awkwardly stare and wait. Absolutely. So, before you go, uh, by the way, this is Swim Bananas, Riot Swim Bananas. Hello. I did see a few people in chat say, who is this awesome person? This is Mel. Hello. Mel will be here every so often with Summoner Showcase as it is revived and brought back again, and it will be here to stay, hopefully. But how can people participate a little bit more? How do sure. they, you know, a lot of people are making art. How do they say, I actually want this to be seen by sure. Riot right away? Do I tweet it Riot, League of Legends, read a, read a report? Use hashtag Summoner Showcase. If you want Summoner Showcase to specifically to see it. If you want Rito Report to talk about it, use hashtag Rito Report. Uh, so Summoner Showcase to show off your art and things. Topics for him to talk about, Rito Report. Absolutely. So we're going to take a quick break right now. One big thank you, one more big thank you to Mel for thank joining you. us and Summoner Showcase. They'll be coming back more and more here on the Riot Report. Again, I am Riv. We'll be back in just a few minutes with that interview with Riot Whitrock as we go over set two of Team Fight Tactics. Don't miss it. That wasn't so bad, right? We're back, and we are here with Riot Whitrock. Whitrock, thank you so much for joining me. Morning, Riv. Super excited to have you here. Team Fight Tactics has been taking everyone by storm. Mm -hmm. I know a few people may have started to play in the beginning, but then we're, they're all afraid of changes, so yeah, yeah. now they're getting back into it, and I want to kind of fill them in on what's going on, because watching some streamers last night, there is quite a bit to unpack. Yes, yes. So let's, let's get into it. First off, to break the ice, I kind of want to get people to know who you are, what do you play in TFT? What, what kind of person are you? Sure, sure. I'm a more creative, off-meta build sort of player, so I like to chase the sort of nine Yordles, nine Sorcerers, leave pirates in my comp until <laughs> round 30, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're just raking <laughs> in the gold. That's good, though. That's good. You're not just like a dirty Yordle or like assassin builder <laughs> no, or whatnot. No. <laughs> Knowing everything in the game, you just be like, I know to play this, into this, into this, and we're good. That's good. It's good. So starting off, 
I, first, I have to ask you, how much fun did your team have making this new set? Because you were the lead for that set, correct? Yes, yes, um, and it was a blast. I mean, uh, ever since we knew that we wanted to do kind of large rotation sets like this, kind of going through that process, figuring out how much change we wanted to do, it was really fun, and we've been playtesting it for now a couple of months, and so we're so excited to have players start to play that, that version of the game. Absolutely. We have a question from a player from the Oceania yeah. League. Uh, from Oceania, I should say, Ashon Lowell says, how do you decide what champs make it into a set? Sure, so for this set, we really focused on hitting a strong theme, which is Rise okay. of the Elements. So we were kind of very focused on what pre-existing LoL champions or League champions with their skins would fit that sort of theme. Then we have to hit a good mix of, you know, sort of kind of marksman characters and tanks and backline access and interesting spells and that kind of all comes together for a set. Is there one thing you, you, you notice, you're like, wait, we have too much of this as you're building, it happens to be? Absolutely. For every set, there's usually something that we're missing a little bit of. So it might be, hey, it's too hard to deal with an AD carry or mages don't have enough answers. So the end of the process is definitely trying to fill in those final gaps. Absolutely. And how much does lore play, kind of, if any, while creating that in the, in the world of TF2? We're, we're not as focused okay. on lore. We kind of are intentionally instead right. exploring the kind of league multiverse. Yeah. So we still care about the kind of characters, but it's not Rune Terra specific sure. canon. It's hey, let's explore all the universes, project, potentially KDA, right. obviously elements in this case. So we're pretty excited for that. I think that makes your job a little bit easier too, because of yes. all the different things we're seeing mm -hmm. coming out now with Steel, Ocean, and like you said, flexing towards the skins, not necessarily yes. the yes. origin of that champion themselves. So I'm really excited, and I think most people are. Uh, one of the huge changes was that the board is getting bigger. Yes. The board is growing in size, <laughs> but there's also gonna be elemental hexes on the board now. So how does this play into your TFT game? So the board is bigger. There's two extra rows, one for each player. Um, that should give a little bit more positional agency and depth. There's also the elemental hex system, which is every game there's gonna be an element, which means that a couple unique positions on the board, if you start a unit in that hex, they're gonna get a bonus. Awesome, and I actually saw that minions don't grab that bonus. They can't be in the hex. They don't, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it a little bit easier for those early rounds when you forget and just grab Lissandra or something. That's true. Uh, so looking Lissandra's at, not in the set. That's right, that's right. <laughs> so looking at this, I wanna take a look at Kiana because yes. there's a lot of other cards that go in there as well, but Kiana's special in the fact that well, she's there. There's actually only four of her in the set. So Kiana is the first time we're trying something, which is that she changes one of her traits every game. Okay. So with that element of the game and those hexes, she will also match that element. She's always going to be an assassin. She always fits into those comps. Perfect. But some games she'll be mountain, some games she'll be ocean, etc. And is there kind of one where you're like, I want Kiana this game? Uh, we've seen all of them kind of do their own thing. Perfect. The ocean team where you're casting a lot of spells yep. or the mountain team where you're more defensive. We've seen a lot of interesting builds. So when the team uh, was creating like classes and origins, like you were saying, when you're fitting everything together, how kind of difficult is it to, or how I should say, how easy it is to say, okay, we can't use this champion anymore. We have, have to use a different one or kind of flex in and out. Yeah, we definitely do champion, kind of different champion swapping and we actually build a sort of larger set than we intend to okay. actually ship. So we have some flexibility. Yeah. Um, so it, it is part of the process uh, and yeah, we do some swapping. All right, so let's talk about some of those new cards again. We yes. did talk about Kiana, yes. Lux is in there, yes. but there's there's Ocean and different origins and classes. Mm -hmm. How how did these all mix? What was your idea with kind of Rise of the Elements? What did you want players to feel? So a big structural thing we're looking to get more out of set two is game to game differences. This is partially why the elemental hex system is there, but also cool. the structure of the trait should mean that you're not as locked into a composition as you're building it up. You have more small defensive options for the late game. You have more kind of narrow counters that'll fit into different builds. So we're looking for more flexibility and creativity there. Absolutely, and with Lux, we know she comes yes. out as the seven <laughs> card. Uh, and there's a bunch of other ones as well. And with the new change and kind of rate drops as well, it feels really good to see a little yeah. bit of the cards earlier and be able to play those. I saw Scar play a Lightning Lux last night. Yes, and it was very powerful Lux. Pretty <laughs> disgusting. But you choose out of all those Luxes. There's still the same amount of Luxes for that five, five kind of the cost. five cost rarity. Yeah, yeah. So there are ten different Luxes ten different, in the game. So, right. but each one of them is a different element. And so once you see a Lux, that's the only electric Lux in the game that you can take. Right. Now once you take it, 
every future Lux you see is gonna be that element. So it's sort of a, yep. hey, there's probably an ideal Lux for my composition, but if I see one that's pretty good, do I make the decision to take that one and slot it into my comp immediately right. or hold out for the best one? We're hoping there's some interesting decisions there. That's awesome, because I had a, a few people asking me last night when I was watching, they're like, so there's 10 of each? And I was like, that would actually be pretty crazy. There'd just be lasers everywhere. Yeah, not quite, not quite. So <laughs> Lux leveling up still happens. You can find level yep, three Yep, you Lux. can three-star the Lux. I've already seen it. it Probably wins you the game. Very hard to do. You need to pay 63 gold to three-star Lux. I think, I, yeah, God, that's absolutely ridiculous. I'm usually <laughs> the guy that's like, I have 20. That's so much, bro. You want to go to level uh, <laughs> nine or three-star your Lux? Yeah, exactly. I recommend three-starring the Lux. <laughs> exactly. I just imagine this three-star Lux being like Exodia or Fiora attacking four times. And yeah, as soon yeah. as you make three-star Lux, literally, anybody could be at any point in the round and this <laughs> laser just comes across every board. Just like a Kamehameha and yep, fires yep. down everybody. Um, good luck if you get that. I want to see it. Hashtag Rito do Report it. if you actually do. Send me a tweet. Now, what do we it. got? Uh, one question. Some question? Bananas. Some of bananas coming in. Oh, I almost fell over. At Amar, the second. I'm a third, but seconds are awesome too. We need seconds to get to thirds. Why do you <laughs> say card when it's not a card game? We use kind of the car term card or champion or you know, unit a little bit inter it interchangeably. It still kind of feels like you're building a deck yeah, of some yeah. sort. And so I think the term card is kind of stuck because that's kind of the way they look in the shop, but sure. we're not super specific about that. Yeah, so. absolutely, absolutely. So what is your favorite thing so far that you have worked on in this set? Um, I think it's got to be Lux, to be honest. I'm just <laughs> already already seeing the kind of different highlights and plays and, and decision-making and kind of strategy that players have employed to try to find those different Luxes. It's really exciting. So talk to me a little bit behind the idea, kind of somebody in a meeting saying, hey, <laughs> we need a seven card. Like, But it can be the same as a five rate. It didn't start out as we need a seven. Okay. It more so started out as, hey, we're doing Rise of the Elements we got to do something with Elementalist Lux. Okay. So oh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, kind yeah. of the starting point. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> so with that, you know, how do you say Lux can do this? She's going to be one of her own. Did you just, you know, you had to do something super unique for her? Yeah, that really was kind of the kind of the starting point. We knew that the various elements that she showed would be really exciting. We also knew that, I mean, those skins are beautiful and so well made, and so being able to get that into TFT was exciting for us. And we know the players really like Lux, and this would be a good time to really give her uh, a good time to shine. People really wanted her in set one as a noble sorcerer, and we're like, hey, we think we can do even better than that. That's Yeah, and you have Summoner's Mystics now, a whole yes, bunch of yes. other things. Uh, how much did you want to keep kind of the old old classes and origins while adding new ones? Or did you want them all to feel different? So we wanted a pretty different feel for the set. A lot of the fun, we think, of TFT is that sort of learning and discovery and creativity process. Yeah. And so if most of the set was the same, we were pretty concerned that you would kind of quickly adapt to the few changes, but then the game would feel pretty similar. Now, not everything is different. We left some champions the same, some spells the same, and a few traits the same Heck to yeah. kind of give you those anchors and some stuff you were familiar with, places to compare, but we want it to feel pretty different. Very cool, very cool. Uh, looking at, as people are saying, there's so much to unpack. You've had so much work done on this. What would you say, uh, we have a few more questions I think coming Ooh. in too, um, was, is an easy way to start unpacking set two. To not feel overwhelmed, sure, sure. to say, okay, maybe learn the origins of classes first, or maybe kind of just go at it and try one set for a bit. Yeah, so I think actually for, for set one as well, but and probably all future sets, sure. get into a game and try to experiment with something, right? You see a couple berserkers in those first few turns, just buy all the berserkers, see what that build yeah, feels yeah. like, see what works, see what doesn't. I think kind of investing in particular comps and, and testing those and then kind of trying to deal with the, the myriad of counters and flexes and defensive options can, can kind of be learned over time. So get into a game, build all the berserkers, build all the mages, try it out. Heck yeah, that is absolutely <laughs> super cool. Now, what do you got for us? What? Thank you very much to Bananas of Swimmingly. I appreciate what do we got? it. We got Luis Plasta. I thought that said pasta, but it's Luis Plasta. New Lux skin for TFT when? Ooh. New Lux skin? <laughs> We're giving you 10 Lux skins. Um, yeah, there's... there's. Where's the chromas of all 10? We are, uh, no plans at this time. I mean, maybe the question is, hey, will Lux be in set three, be in set four? Will we use Steel Legion? Will right? we use her base right? skin? 
maybe, where you do want to keep doing different versions of champions. Sometimes right. it'll be their most iconic ability. Sometimes it'll be something that's more supportive to the rest of the cast. We want to keep doing different versions of the same champion over time. I think it'd be cool if maybe Lux went like Lucent Singularity next time. Yeah. And then yeah. the the three or maybe a leveled up four or five hexes she hits, she then autos those people to burst her yes, life. Yes, yes. Right? That's in, awesome. In sequence. Yeah, yeah. Boom. There we go. We're doing it right yeah. here. Luis, beautiful job. We just came up with something new that might work. Uh, Jedi Master Geo. Jedi Master. Uh, will there ever be a new set in the middle of a ranked season? Not at not something we're planning at least. Um, we think ranked is also. Are a you good... trying to say league did it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> it, ranked is basically a good opportunity to really show what you're doing for that set, and Absolutely. the game is so different. And what we're testing each set is going to be a little bit different, where we kind of want to reset the rank. Also, we don't want to throw you into ranked right away. So when the season launches, you know, play some of those normal games, practice a bit, and you know, then then jump into that ranked system. Absolutely awesome. I believe November 6th is when people can get back in. Yes, that is the launch date. It's on PBE yeah. right now as well if you have PBE access. So watch those streams, check it out, but get excited for November 6th. It's going to be awesome. Set 2 coming out right where Rock. Thank yeah. you so much for joining me. Glad Make sure to, be to here. catch that set. This is the lead designer on it. Make sure to keep the questions coming in because we'll answer them in our next show on November 6th when all of this drops. We'll be right back with a little bit of esports, so stay tuned. Sweet. Welcome back. I appreciate you hanging with us for these short breaks. If you have run to the bathroom or not, or just stayed, you are awesome. Keep the stream up, even if you're playing some League, even if you're playing some TFT, and we'll talk a little bit more about everything here at the end of the show to kind of round it out and let you know what's happening and what will be coming up for November 6th. Now, moving on, though, we are going to be talking a little bit about eSports. You may know that Worlds is currently going on. It is the 2019 World Quarterfinals that will be coming up this Saturday, and I am very sorry to announce that all of North America has been disqualified from Worlds. Not disqualified, they lost out. It was a great run for a few teams. <laughs> we have to understand that, you know, Liquid had a rematch. It was a big one. They couldn't make it happen. And Cloud9, maybe their parade did get rained on. And, you know, maybe it's a good thing that Clutch is rebranding. Who knows? Who knows? But all kidding aside, they fought hard, they fought well, and there is much, much to talk about. Um, knowing that the teams moving forward are going to be from the European LC LC LEC and the LCK, they have some really, really great teams up on the docket for Saturday. Quarterfinals are going to reach out to Griffin versus Invictus Gaming. Can Chovy finally make it work against the reigning world champions of Invictus Gaming. Will they be able to make it happen again? Who knows? We have seen a little bit of falter in them, but both teams still playing strong. That will start off on Saturday. After that, best of five quarterfinal match, you have Fun Plus versus Fnatic. A lot of people are putting Fun Plus over Fnatic on this one. I know they're fighters. Fnatic has been kind of not down on themselves, but saying we will work hard, we will make it happen. Please believe in us. And I think Fnatic is a team that can definitely make it happen. I've seen a few of the, the casters and the analysts rating Fun Plus over that. I think Fun Plus will definitely have a very good fight for that game. They have been performing towards the end of what was the group stage now into quarterfinals. So have to watch out for that. Moving on to Sunday, you have SKT versus Splice. Good luck. That is going to be a tough one. But 
never down and out. We have to remember what Misfits was able to do in the 2017 quarterfinals versus SKT, bringing them to five games in what was one of the most awesome series that League of Legends has ever been able to watch. So if you tune in for that one, you may also get what they call on that side of the world, a banger. Now, looking at your final game of Sunday, that best of five between Don Juan and G2 Esports. I think a lot of people feel that G2 Esports has kind of brushed off the cockiness. We did see them fall very hard a few games into that group in that group stage. So if they can pick themselves back up, be the G2 that a lot of the LEC remembers to just kind of play their own game and not even give their opponent the time of day to make a play happen. That's the G2 Esports that we're gonna probably find in the semifinals. To the main stage, those are your four games going on through Saturday and Sunday. They are starting quite early here. If you're on the West Coast, be sure to check out watch.lolesports.com for your time and the schedule is up there as well at lolesports.com. Now, the most, uh, be sure to hit up your pickums as well as we do get, get yourselves over to that world stage. There's, I think, quite a few left. I don't have the number in my head. I don't even know why I try to do quick maths, but we're not going to. Um, looking at the most iconic plays last year was really, really awesome. LOL Esports tweeted out today the most iconic teams referencing last year's most iconic plays. It was really, really cool. So this year it's going to be, who do you think the best team is in world history? Is that gonna be any one of these teams in their current state from the left or the right side? You figure it out, you vote for it, keep tweeting. The voting will come out later in the day. I don't know if LOL Esports has yet tweeted that, but be sure to check out that Twitter account and make sure you are on top of it because this is really fun. Last year's was really, really cool too. Uh, moving forward now, we do have a few talking points for Aries. There's not much new to discuss as of right now, but there were a few tweets coming up from the Aries team of Greg Street and Chris Tom, kind of confirming a few things, and these, this is what they were. Greg Street says, while we are honored by comparisons between Riot's, Riot's Project A and other games, uh, they aren't really the same genre. Project A is a tactical shooter, lethality is high, and you do not respawn. Map control and gunplay are key, as well as the abilities are more about utility, not taking someone out. Chris Tom then added, roughly this, Project A's game pacing is much more methodical and strategic than action shooters or hero shooters. Tactical shooters tend to be defined by their planning, precision, and lethality and deliberateness. Project A definitely falls into that camp really excited to share the few things with you like we said it's all about transparency here on the riot report these were just tweets but maybe you didn't see them they did come out after they said project a was going dark and there's little tidbits here and there that are allowed to be shared just not much more than what the devs are saying about the game so we're very happy to continue to share these things with you as project a comes along and they are dark for now but you will hear more in 2020. It's time to close out the day. It's time to close out the second edition or the second episode of Riot Report. I want to thank you so much for joining me. Do remember that you have Senna coming out on PBE on October 28th. We're still going through the 10 days of gifting right now. Earth is coming out October 28th through the 8th. So make sure you get yourself in there for Earth. That is going to be super fun. Esports again, Worlds 2019 is starting up this weekend on Saturday for the quarterfinals as we're kind of going through the laundry list here. Um, November 6th is a big date. That's when we will be back at 10 a.m. That's when TFT season two set, or the set two drops as well. We just talked to Riot Whitrock. That means that the 921 beta rank season of TFT will be ending then as 922 starts. So make sure you get the end of your rank season in and put your little legends to work. Be sure to still check out your shop. Like I said, the 10 days of gifting. And I do want to bring up something that we're gonna bring back here on Riot Report. You may remember something called the Legendary League of Legends League. Just great plays that you see all the time, whether they're amazing, whether they're terrible, whether they just made you laugh. Hashtag Legendary League of Legends League. We wanna bring it back. We wanna see whatever plays you're making, whenever you're making them, whether you were playing alone, whether you were streaming and you were recording it, send them to us so we can put them on Riot Report and we can all enjoy them at the end of our day. We'll open it up as a mailbag and we'll just have a way to recap everything along with what you've been doing awesome in the community as well as in game. Whether it be Legends of Runeterra when you get a chance to play it again on November 14th when the patch preview opens. That's right, Legends of Runeterra opening back up on the patch preview 
uh, November 14th. Make sure you're out there for the drops. Make sure you're out there because expeditions will be starting. That's right, the draft card game mode. So make sure you get Legends of Runeterra locked into your brain. November 14th, patch preview will open. And it did, Legends of Runeterra isn't available now because they are patch previews, because they're just little segments. We're getting people in, we're getting you to play the game, get your ideas, and get your suggestions, and then we bring it back. Iterate, and again on November 14th, we'll get that same chance. Again, make sure you get yourself over to PBE to try out all the TFT changes. If you're on our level three, you can get yourself signed up for a PBE account. Just go ahead and check that out. If you just Google PBE League of Legends, it'll, it'll take you right there. And so much awesome stuff to come. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of Riot Report. That is going to do it for this show, and we will see you next time on November 6th as we're going every other week. Good luck, have fun, and good night. <laughs>